Hello friends, welcome to today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you and to share um, the word of God with you. I, I pray that it really is an inspiration and an encouragement to you. To my new subscribers, I thank you for subscribing to this channel. On this channel, we really just talk about God and our day-to-day -day lives. And, you know, the struggles that we face that sometimes you're not able to share or, or we just brush it aside. We never really talk about them because we have the assumption that we should all just be walking in accordance to the word of God. And we forget that we are human and we're living in a world that has various things that take place on a daily basis that are, affect us. And sometimes we do not really equip one another on how to then live a life that is pleasing to God whilst we're still here on earth. That brings me to today's conversation that I'll be having with you. Um, and it really has no title. <laughs> I know there's already a title, but in my mind, I just want us to talk about um, something that I've been studying and it's sacrifice. And I know in your life, you have sacrificed in many, many ways. You have sacrificed eating certain food for a particular time or even just totally. Or you've sacrificed purchasing something so that you could help someone or so you could give to someone or so you could save. But sacrifice always isn't easy. It costs you and I something. At times we've sacrificed even friendships certain relationships so that for some it's so that they can have peace of mind for others it's so that they can grow in a certain area of their life but sacrifice is always going to be painful it's like you're being ripped or torn into two and then i'm reminded of the word of god from hosea chapter 6 verse 6 that says for i desire mercy not sacrifice an acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offering. So at this time, God's people were still good at bringing sacrifices, but they had forsaken mercy and they abandoned mercy because they gave up the knowledge of God and they gave up the knowledge of God's truth. And that you can find in Hosea chapter four, verse one. God would rather have a right heart that is full of truth and mercy than your sacrifice. Because sometimes I've also known that we sacrifice to be seen, but our hearts are very far from the sacrifice that the so-called sacrifice that we are presenting, like if it's one that you can actually see. And so we learn in Hosea that God is not interested in that. He's more interested in the posture of your heart easily miss the heart of God in church because we're so focused on superficial things and not to say that what we're focusing on is wrong but our hearts are no longer in it it's more for having to do it it's more of a ritual it's more of this is my responsibility this is my title then is this really what God wants God in my opinion, God likes or he approves of religious activity. Because as a Christian, there are just certain religious activity you're going to be a part of. I don't think that God has a problem with the activities that we are a part of. I don't think God has a problem that you wear a uniform to church. I don't think he has a problem that you have a certain dance routine or a certain scripture that you read every morning before service starts or just a certain way that you do things within your church. I don't think that's where the problem is. But the outward rituals that we perform, they're kind of meaningless to God because if our heart is not in it, if we're not doing it with the right understanding, with the right motives, it's totally a waste of time before God. If what we are doing in church, what we're doing in our Christian walk is not the reality of our heart, then we're really fooling ourselves more than anyone. We're fooling ourselves. The church, if it's now a church thing that we're doing, like I'll give an example. And if you wear a uniform, I'm not attacking you by any means, but that's the easiest thing I could think of. 
you're wearing your uniform, you iron it, you, you look excellent, you look exquisite on Sunday or whichever day you go to church or wear that uniform, if your heart is not in it, then it's a waste of time. There's nothing that you're just doing it for your flesh and for you to be noticed because I've learned that some uniforms have power more than, more than ours. Others, as incorrect as that sounds, but you have to ask yourself that, why, why am I doing this? Do I have the right understanding of why I'm doing it? Even though a uniform does not take you to heaven, it's your heart, what's inside your heart. So, but it's not wrong because I know some doctrines, some religions, they prefer things to be that way. But if you're doing that without having a relationship with God and without understanding the reason behind why you're doing it, what are your motives, then it's a waste of time to God. When you look at Romans 12 verse 1, it says, Therefore, I appeal, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. In this chapter, we learn that offering your body is what God considers as true and proper worship. All these things that we enjoy doing, all these committees and meetings we love to attend, if our heart is not in it, if we have not given up ourselves to God, then we are not living true and pleasing in His sight in accordance to Romans 12 verse 1. This chapter could be like likened to this chapter could be likened to an application of salvation. A commit a call to commitment for all that God has done for you. A call to commitment. When you reflect on what God has done for you, you desire then to give yourself to him as a living sacrifice which will be holy and acceptable unto him. Now, when you're offering yourself as a living sacrifice, we know that it's re referring to your lifestyle, the devotion and the commitment that you have to God and to the things of the Lord. And I've known through the journey of my Christian walk that offering your body as a living sacrifice is made possible through the power of the Holy Spirit because we are flesh. Our flesh is the thing that we, we kind of relate to more than our spirit man. Because your flesh, you see it, you understand it better than you may understand your spirit. So it's easier for you to, to do what, to, to participate or to just take care of your flesh over your spirit man. That's why it is an urge. We're being told that with emergency offer up your body as a living sacrifice that is proper worship now there are many ways you you and i can offer up our bodies as living sacrifices firstly we have to die to self which is always going to be a struggle because you'll realize that you do not die to self today and then forget about it we are constantly every day dying to self the Bible tells us that we have to daily renew our minds. And that's the wonderful thing about the Lord is that he knows that every day presents itself for, with troubles. That's why you find in Lamentations, the Bible tells us that because of his loving kindness, we are not consumed. It later tells us that his mercies are new every morning. God knew that every morning we needed his mercy. Every morning, he knows. And that's why we have to have that understanding. You shouldn't judge yourself so harshly, like, man, how come I cannot get over this? Or man, I should do better. Yes, you should do better, but don't stop. Because sometimes you have, you know, people have a tendency, after you try, you try, you try, then you fail. Sometimes you just stop. 
but you're encouraged in the Bible that every day, every single day you have to renew your mind. So what happened yesterday is gone in yesterday, but today you have to renew your mind. That's why I always say it's important to pray in the morning. You can pray in the afternoon and ask the Lord to lead you like, it's three, two, five in the evening. How are you going to ask for his guidance? In the morning, you wake up and you make a prayer to God to lead you through the day. You acknowledge that, Lord, without your protection and you breathing once again in my lungs and allowing me to wake up, the Holy Spirit wakes us up. If you do not understand that it is his power, then you need to have a little bit more time in understanding the power of God over life or over nature. Because it's his mercies that we see every morning. So every morning, ask him to guide your way. Let his word be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. On our own, we can't do it. That's why I'm so grateful that we have the Holy Spirit. We don't need to crack our heads over things. So when we are presenting our bodies to God as a living sacrifice, um, and it's the inward part that really has to be renewed, our mind, our thought, the way we view things, if the Lord doesn't penetrate into that, we'll always live beneath what he wants us to live and we'll never really present ourselves totally to him, truly worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Now. I know some people feel like you've presented your body as a living sacrifice. So you've changed your clothing and you've probably changed your eating habits, the things you listen to. But the tricky part is if you're doing that with no understanding or for show or because when you receive Jesus Christ, whoever led you to the Lord told you, you have to change your outward appearance you have to stop doing all these fancy hairstyles people go through different processes <laughs> but if your heart is not there you have no understanding you're just following the trend of what's in that church then you are not doing it according to the word of god now growth always plays an important part in our christian walk because when you started, if you look where you started and where you are today, I'm sure you can see a lot of growth. I'm sure you'll laugh when you read a scripture that you thought meant something and now you're viewing it in another way. But when you are presenting your body as a living sacrifice, don't get me wrong. Yes, the Lord may work through the power of the Holy Spirit with your outward look. You may feel that the Lord is telling you don't dress in a certain manner, don't use certain products, don't wear some a weave or just keep your natural hair. God, through the Holy Spirit, may speak to you in whichever way he wants you to go. But then you have to then, because I know some people who wear a certain type of clothing and feel they are more righteous than someone in pants or in jeans then you know that probably your heart is it still needs a little work done although modesty is always encouraged in the word of god if we search scriptures we will find places in the bible which will talk about modest dressing and give us a clear understanding but if you are now changing your clothing and then you're going around accusing people of not living true Christian lives because of their clothing, then you need to check yourself. Because the Bible is telling us, yes, you will be changed. There are certain things about your outward appearance that someone may immediately see, oh, there's a change in sister so-and-so. But you're inward. You know, when you're living sacrifice for the Lord, he may tell you, you may be someone who always speaks their mind. And he tells you to refrain. He tells you to take a minute and you actually take a minute. That's sacrifice that you're doing for the good of God, for God. When he tells you to wake up and pray and you actually wake up and pray, that's sacrifice because we know how hard it is. At times you, you have heard the Lord telling you, 
that inner voice has told you to get up and pray. And you're just like, ah, you know, let me give it a little bit of time. We've gone through that. I'm sure you're going through that or you're struggling with that. Just get up and pray. If the Lord places it in your heart and God is amazing because he won't tell you to fast at nine in the morning. <laughs> I mean, maybe someone has that testimony, but usually it will be some days before you actually then fast or the night before you're in bed and you feel like the Lord is placing it on your heart to fast. And you go ahead and do it in obedience, even though you know that, ah, this is hard for me. That's sacrifice. When you're getting up to go to church, to do whatever needs to be done, to make sure everything is in order, people are still sleeping. Some churches, I know their praise and worship get there as early as 6 a.m. for a service which starts at 8. That's sacrifice. But now when you're doing that, do it unto God. Don't do it so the pastor can see you because he really can't do anything, but just tell you thank you or good job. Some may be fortunate they'll buy you lunch or something nice like that. But our heart must not be pulled towards what am I going to get out of it? What God has done for you, his mercy, his grace, what he did for you is enough for you to give yourself to him as a living sacrifice in true and pure worship. Certain disputes that you have at church, at work, in your family, and the Lord tells you, hush, you realize, ha, huh, people even get shocked that this is not how sister so-and-so acts. This is not her character. You know that you are truly living your life in accordance to the Lord, that's the proper worship that he wants, where you humble yourself so he may be exalted in your life. Now, when you're struggling, you know that I know God wants me to refrain. I know God wants me to be humble. I know God wants me to give. I know God wants me to love. If you're struggling with it, what I could encourage you to do is go back to the drawing board. The Holy Spirit is our enabler. He's the one who lights up that fire. And when it's getting low, you go back. That's why it's important for us to keep in communion with him so that our fire keeps burning. But when it's low, you ask for him to rekindle it. We have that advantage that your relationship with the Lord is really personal. I don't know the secret things you're doing with God, the way he's working on your character. I'm not there to see it. I probably don't even know you're struggling with that. But when I see you, I'll be like, wow, I see the glory of the Lord on you. That's the good thing about God. He doesn't, and at times, yes, you're exposed. He exposes you because maybe sometimes we're taking too long to get in line with where he's directing us. But for the most part, he's busy pruning us in the secret place. He's molding us. He's grooming us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he presents us there and we look amazing. We have the fire and the light of God that people begin to ask, like, what is it about you? And you begin to tell them about the goodness of the Lord. But it's all sacrifice. I've said it before that there are people we admire in the body of Christ as a whole. We look at them, they, the way they speak the word of God, their prayers, the way they operate. They just have this thing about them. But we forget that people are spending time seeking God. Some people are doing a vigil on their own. They're up the whole night praying, Lord, transform me. Lord, make me a channel of your peace. Lord, make me the light that you desire me to be. Then we see them. For some, they're now on TV. And then you're like, oh, how did that happen? Or they're preaching or speaking at conferences or they're leading massive women's ministries and you're wondering like how it's sacrifice sacrifice they died to fleshly appetites fleshly desires they said die and this comes through the power of the holy spirit and god is so faithful that he gives us all that power but you have to work on it you have to spend time in it you have to be willing to be transformed 
and it's spending time in his word. His word is what's going to bring transformation. And that sacrifice was reading the word of God. Sometimes you open it, you have no clue what's happening. You need the Holy Spirit. And just because you didn't understand today's verse that you read, doesn't mean you close your Bible. Tomorrow you go back and you try and try. And the more you do that, God will reveal himself unto you. We have to be confident and go before him boldly. Lord, here I am. Take me, Lord. I am your living sacrifice. May I worship you in spirit and in truth. And may my worship and my praise be acceptable unto you. Don't be intimidated by people who pray for an hour, three, five hours. Start from where you are and allow the Holy Spirit to groom you and mold you into who he has you to be. I always say jokingly with people that if I had a beautiful voice, I'd be singing everywhere. And that's why probably I don't because my motives will probably not be right. If I have my motives are like this with no voice, they will probably be the same with the voice. But there's something that you are good at that God has gifted you with. Focus on that. Allow him to groom you in that. Excel in that and allow all men to be drawn to God through what you are doing for him. So as we're reflecting on this word today, what are the things that are hindering you from presenting your body as a living sacrifice to the Lord? Is it your desire for gain, wealth, earthly possessions? Because those sometimes keep us focused on the wrong thing. When you have, and, and it's something that I struggled with at some point in my life, accumulating things sometimes is a reflection of what you're truly missing inside. So you can want to accumulate like plates or carbs or random stuff, right? You have to know, why am I doing this? Is there a benefit in me doing this? Not that what you are doing is wrong, your motive. And sometimes when we get to a place where we are so used to doing things in our own strength and in our own power, we will then struggle to present our bodies as a living sacrifice before the Lord. Because you're thinking, why? I, we forget that God <laughs> enables us to do a lot of things as Christians. Because some people will be like, well, the people in the world have better lives than we do. They may have better lives. And we also have better lives. The problem is what you consider better. And the problem is you're not content and satisfied with who you are in Christ. Because God will give you contentment. Have you seen people who are wealthy? They have everything you are dreaming of, but they have no peace. They look at you and are wishing to be you. You're looking at them and wishing you're them. The relationship you have with the Lord Jesus Christ, don't take it for granted. Jesus Christ sacrificed his life. He died on the cross so that you and I may not have to die anymore. So in all I've said, live a life that is pleasing to God. Remove the things. You know the things. Some of them are right at the top of your head that you know hinder you, that you know you struggle with. It may be sleep. Something as simple as sleep. You sleep too much. And then you cannot give time to God because you are behind time in everything now. Find out what is it that is hindering me from actually giving myself, my body to God. What is it? And when you find out what it is, what are you going to do now so that you can really reflect upon your life and say, you know what? I feel that I have grown because now I can say that I have given myself to God as a living sacrifice in true worship, genuinely offering myself to him, not for people to see, not for people to comment but for him to receive all glory when people look at my life. Sacrifice is not easy. Jesus sacrificed for you and I. But right now, 
He is the King of glory. As painful as that sacrifice was, He is the King of glory. Right now as we speak, He reigns in victory. And because we are His children, we are in victory. Our lives are victorious. Regardless of where you are, you are victorious. You have to allow yourself, your mind, to align with the word of God pertaining to who you are and allow the Holy Spirit to begin to do the work in you. Those are not words that the world wants to hear. The world just wants everything to be quick, quick, quick. No lessons learned going through the wide road. But that's not with us as Christians. So even if you wear a uniform to church, wear it with the right mind to understand that it is the blood of Jesus Christ. Whoever thought of us having a uniform, okay, thank you. But it is the blood of Jesus Christ that has allowed me to then walk around saying I'm a daughter of so-and-so church. Or if you've decided that, you know what? This is the path that I want to take. I want to wake up early at 3 a.m. and pray and read my word. Don't boast and brag about it. You may encourage people to do so. But remember that you actually could just be sleeping. Sacrifice that you're doing. And one thing I've learned is in all this, it is the Holy Spirit who nudges us to realize that I need to do better in line with my relationship with the Lord. The Lord loves us so much that every single day his desire is to draw us closer to himself so that he can work in us and that the work in us will begin to go to the world and touch the lives of those who do not know him. That is the goal. That's our goal as believers, to touch the lives of those who do not know the Lord. And once you have sacrificed your own self and know that I'm living a life where I've sacrificed, the Lord will honor you. The Lord will remember you. The Lord will not let you or your children be put to shame. He's a faithful God. His plan is for you to be pure. His plan is for you to know him. His plan is for us to speak of who he is so that the world may draw to him and not away from him. Because the Lord, he doesn't want anyone to perish. As much as we have free will, he still wants us to live eternal life. So friends, thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope that this has challenged you. It challenges me all the time. Because I understand how hard it is to sacrifice. I truly do. Sometimes I don't want to wake up and pray. Sometimes I don't want to fast. Sometimes I don't want to read the Bible. Sometimes I read it and then I don't understand it. And then it's so frustrating. But I continue. We have to love the relationship that we have with the Lord so much that we are excited to be with him. We are excited to fellowship with other believers. We are excited to glorify his holy name. Continue to share the videos. Continue to comment. I enjoyed your comments in the last video. It's always amazing to know how what people think as well about what you're talking about. But I pray that God will continue to strengthen you in this week and that even as you're saying, Lord, help me live a life as according to Romans 12 verse 1, may it be so with you and may it be well with your families. May the blessing of the Lord really be upon you. It is my, I always pray for my subscribers because I thank God for your life, that you desired to be a part of this channel so that you could hear the word of God. That's another sacrifice that you are listening. You could be watching random videos or whatever, but here you are. God bless you. May he show up and mighty in your life and may his promises in your life come to pass. You know, one verse that I like is where um, it says that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I pray that upon your life that you will see his goodness in the land of the living and that all the promises that you know he has given to you, you will experience them to the fullest.